On one hand, the pill ushered in the revolution of women's sexual liberation. On the other hand, the pill robs women of their sexual interest, desire, and pleasure experience. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Spring to Life podcast. I'm Caitlin, your host slash hormone health coach, femme educator, Pilates instructor, and creator of the Spring to Life method. My goal is to promote feminine body independence and share stories of female resiliency to help you love your body more and unleash your inner superpower, your period. And as you probably gleaned from that little snippet at the beginning, we are talking about female sex drive or libido today and how it correlates to the use of hormonal contraceptives such as the pill and hormonal IUDs. This episode is going to be part uh, experience story. I'm going to share a little bit about my experience, and then we're going to get into the science of things. So let's dive in. Okay, it's about to get real intimate here, maybe a little TMI, but I really want to share these stories because it is important for us as women to know that we have options. So if there is even just one listener out there that is positively impacted by listening to this, that is able to take some proactive steps in order to take control of their health, then I consider that worth it. I consider my job as done. So we are going to be talking about your sex drive on the pill, how hormonal contraceptives affect your sex drive or your libido. So I'm going to share a little bit about my own personal experience first, just so you can kind of have some anecdotal evidence of what the possible implications of birth control are. And then we're gonna get a little bit more into the science. So for me, I got a Skyla IUD inserted in my early 20s. That is like a Mirena, but it's smaller. It's a lower dose of hormones. I made this decision because I was in the beginning stages of my relationship and my partner and I both loved the peace of mind it provided when things started getting frisky. And at first I barely even noticed it. The insertion process, horrible. But once that was over, I really, didn't notice anything that was amiss or off aside from the fact that I wasn't getting a period at all, but that was kind of par for the course at that point in my life. I'd always had an irregular period either due to um, over-exercising, under-eating, or stress. It just was kind of consistently inconsistent, so not having to deal with it at all was like, okay, cool. I actually liked that. Now I know that that's not a good thing, but that's not where I was at at that point in my life. So I got this IUD inserted. I thought it was the great greatest thing ever at first, but slowly over the first few years of my relationship with my boyfriend, which was also kind of the same amount of time almost that I had this IUD, my interest in sex started to decline and I struggled to become aroused or experience orgasm. And this was frustrating because I had always had a healthy sex drive in the past, and so this lack of interest really started to make me feel like something was wrong with me. And then additionally, I more frequently began having pain with sex, like some positions were just like excruciating when I had once enjoyed them. And on top of that, I constantly had a yeast infection or a UTI. And actually the first time I had a UTI, I, I like almost died. My brain was like on fire. I didn't know what was wrong with me. Urgent care gave me the wrong antibiotics at first. And it was just a horrific experience that I feel like just kind of set me up to have this chronic experience with infection. And it didn't matter how hygienic I was, which was the really frustrating thing. And I would get antibiotics from the doctor. I would try the -the over-the-counter more uh, like herbal remedies you could buy at CVS. And it just felt like nothing worked and I could not figure out what was going on. And 
this just continued happening. The lack of interest in sex, the pain, the discomfort, the it just was really off-putting for me. And this eventually began to create some tension and some friction in my relationship, leading to some arguments. And eventually, five years after I got the Skylot inserted, I made the decision to get it removed. And I'm going to add the caveat that this was not the only reason that I got it removed. Yes, I was uh, had a low sex drive. I was having pain with sex. I was having recurring infections. I also was dealing with the worst cystic acne that I'd ever experienced in my life as an adult. I'd never had it as a teenager. And I was having a lot of digestive issues. And by this point, I was already on the path to becoming a holistic health coach and studying hormone health. So I'd already taken some actions to help alleviate these symptoms, but there were things that were still lingering and all signs pointed to my hormonal birth control. So it was daunting though, because it was something that I had relied on for so long and I didn't know what life was going to be like without it. So I took the plunge, I got it removed and The difference was like night and day. My sex drive immediately returned. I experienced a wide range of emotions at this point, some of them being relief, some being pleasure, and then anger, just to name a few. But I was just so surprised by how much it had impacted my health and especially my sex drive. And once I had gotten on the other side of it, I kind of thought back and was like, well, I don't know why I didn't make the connection sooner because when I was 21, I briefly was on the pill and it was a generic and it so drastically affected me from migraines to intense cramping that I had never experienced to hot flashes, which I I had never experienced migraines, cramps, or hot flashes up to that point. And I was only 21. So right away, within a couple of months, I knew it was because I was taking this pill. So I stopped taking it and I knew that that was not for me. I could tell without knowing much that those hormones were like whacking my body out. It was way too much. But I was naive in thinking that the quote unquote low dose of hormones in the Skyla IUD would be gentler on my system. But the truth ended up being that my Skyla IUD so drastically affected my libido that I promised myself to never use uh, another hormonal birth control again because the reward of preventing pregnancy for me just did not outweigh the risks being compromised gut health, mood disorders, and the cherry on top, a seriously tanked libido. And this week we are focusing on the sex drive on the libido. There will be subsequent episodes where we talk about these other major things of gut health and mood disorders and mental health and how it relates to hormonal birth control. So just keep an eye out for those. But right now we are about to dive into what I consider to be the greatest irony of the pill and other hormonal birth controls how it negatively affects your libido. On one hand, the pill ushered in this revolution of women's sexual liberation, but on the other hand, the pill robs women of their sexual interest, desire, and pleasure experience. So it's like you're trading one thing for the other and it doesn't balance out. And if you think about it, like how long do you think men would put up with a drug that reduced their sex drive to nearly nothing? Like honestly, would it, even make it to the market? And I think we know the answer to that because it is evidenced in society. But women have been suffering the side effects of hormonal birth control since the 1950s. That's over 70 years. So how exactly does the pill affect your sex drive? Number one, increased sex hormone binding globulin and decreased free testosterone. So women naturally have a small amount of testosterone compared to men, but it is a necessary hormone for a healthy sex drive. The pill and other hormonal birth controls work by decreasing the production of ovarian and adrenal testosterone and drastically increasing the production of sex hormone binding globule. So SHBG for short levels. And this binds to the testosterone in your bloodstream, making it unavailable for any other use. So this SHGB is 
like assigning itself to all of the free testosterone in your bloodstream, you don't have any left over to put towards your libido. So put plainly, the pill overloads your system with SHGB, which binds to most of your free testosterone, leaving little left over to supply your libido. The pill that allows you to have safe sex actually makes you want to have less sex. Uh, so number two, pain with sex. This is something I mentioned in my own experience. Hormonal birth controls are known to increase the risk of vulvodynia, which is pain in your vulvar area, which can cause, and I might mispronounce this, but dysparanoia or painful intercourse, which may be related to our third point, which is decreased vulvar and clitoral tissue volume. You heard that, right? The pill and other hormonal birth controls can actually shrink the size of your vulvar tissues, as in reducing the thickness of your labia minora and vaginal opening, as well as reducing clitoral volume by about 20%. That's pretty wild, and I'm pretty sure your doctor didn't tell you that before they prescribed you the pill or whatever hormonal birth control that you're on. And finally, there's an increased risk for yeast infections and UTIs. The pill and other hormonal birth controls totally mess with your gut microbiome, which eventually also messes with your vaginal microbiome. And when the pH is off, like too acidic, then inf infection can run rampant. And the kicker here is that antibiotics from your primary care doc are gonna zap the infection in no time, but they're also zapping your already suffering gut microbiome, leaving you susceptible to even more infection. So it's just kind of like this slippery slope and then it just becomes this wheel of one thing feeding into the other. And all of these issues compounded together you know, sex is like a hard pass when you're not in the mood and it hurts and you get a burning infection every other time. So if any of this resonates with you, you are not alone because it is a very common experience for women that are on hormonal birth control. But the truth is that you deserve to experience your own unique and healthy libido. You deserve to enjoy sex without worrying about triggering pain, and you deserve to live in a state of health infection free. So we talked about the problems. Let's talk about the solutions. What can you do to reclaim your sex drive? So number one, this is something I say often and we've already touched on it, but you want to care for your gut. I know I might sound like a broken record, but I'm gonna say it again. Gut health is everything. 80% of your immune system is housed in your gut. To keep yeast infections and UTIs at bay, removing inflammatory foods from your diet like alcohol, caffeine, gluten, processed sugar, and soy is a really great start, including gut-friendly foods like yogurt, fruits and vegetables, and fermented foods like pickles and kimchi are also really supportive to a healthy gut microbiome. You can also take a probiotic. I will link my favorite probiotic in the show notes for you. And just generally being aware of how certain foods affect you and how you feel. You shouldn't have too much discomfort when you are digesting food. Number two, eating aphrodisiac foods. So certain foods are proven to up your sex drive. Um, things like avocados, figs, honey, strawberries, chocolate, saffron, and oysters. All of these foods I feel like kind of have a mm, luck luxurious um, kind of connotation to them. If you think of like figs and honey, chocolate dip, dip strawberries, uh, oysters um, on ice and saffron is such a uh, luxury spice. So adding these foods into your diet um, not only will make you feel very luxurious, but they can also help boost your libido as well. Number three, using a non-toxic lube. A good lube can be a game changer, but not all are created equal. You have to be careful and read the labels, especially if you are prone to infections because products like lube can contain ingredients that are actually irritating and will make matters worse. 
My top picks are the Maud Shine Organic Water and Aloe Base Personal Lubricant. It's really excellent. They also make uh, compatible condoms. I can link that in the show notes. And then a great standby is organic coconut oil. And you might already even have this in your kitchen. So that's really non-irritating and works for most people. Next, you can stop taking the pill or whatever hormonal birth control you are on. The surest way to fix a problem is to go straight to the source. And I know it might sound radical, but there are plenty of non-hormonal ways to prevent unwanted pregnancy that will actually help you live in harmony with your body. There are non-hormonal contraceptives like the copper IUD or the fertility awareness method, which is something that I teach in my feminine body independence program. If you are still on a hormonal contraceptive, I recommend a transition period preparing your body. Don't just quit cold turkey because there's a lot going on, probably some nutritional deficiencies and an unhealthy gut. So you want to support that, get that healthy before you transition off of your hormonal birth control. I have options to support you through my spring to life method app. We are going to address the habits that contribute to your hormone health. We're going to work towards your specific hormone health goals and regulating your cycle. And we'll also get you synced in terms of your exercise being appropriate for your cycle phase and get you familiar with how your menstrual phase works, how your body flows through it. And that prepares you to smoothly transition off of hormonal birth control. And then you're prepped and primed to learn the FEM method of cycle charting that I teach in my feminine body independence program. So if you are ready to take the plunge, if you are ready for support, I would invite you to check the show notes. There is a form for you to fill out because I am now taking on new applicants for my app because it is kind of a small group container. I do give you individual support and I want to make sure that we are working cohesively to achieve your goals. So I'm not working with hundreds of people at a time. I'm working with tens of people at a time. So if you want to be in that group with direct access to me, like literally this is like having me in your pocket, then check out the show notes. There is a form for you to fill out kind of like an application and we will be in touch. And that is going to be, I'm starting that new round in a couple weeks here. So if you're interested in that, I really recommend at least fill out the form get some information on the program. I'll chat with you and we'll see if it's a good fit. This is is no commitment. It's just you putting out the feelers to see if this is the right step for you to take on your hormone health journey. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Spring to Life podcast. Like I said, check out the show notes for all the resources mentioned. I'll make sure to link everything, including the application to my new uh, coaching program, especially if you are considering transitioning off the pill or if you just feel like you're in a place where your hormones are kind of whack and you want some support, this is gonna be a great way for you to get there and As I mentioned, this is a new culmination of my services. This is a new bundle that I'm launching. So the first few ladies that sign up are going to get a special gift from me. So just to let you know, there is a little incentive there, but fill out that form, check out the show notes. And if you learned something new, if you resonated with this conversation, if you know that this conversation is going to resonate with another woman in your life, please share it. Tag me in your Instagram stories. I'm at spring to life method. I would love and appreciate so much if you could leave a five-star review that helps other women find the show and uh, share it with a girlfriend. All women deserve to know their superpower. I'll talk to you next week.